Hi, it's Katrina. Number 9. Deformed Skulls When Rome collapsed during the 5th century, the empire swiftly abandoned its territories in the Pannonia region of what is now Western Hungary as the conquering Huns invaded Central Europe. In the meantime, foreign groups traveled to Pannonia seeking refuge and joined the localized Roman settlements. These rapidly changing population dynamics caused a cultural shift that today's experts are still trying to understand. Since 1961, dozens of deformed skulls have been unearthed from a cemetery in the region. Out of 96 burials, 51 bore evidence of a practice called skull binding, which involves artificially stretching a person's head throughout their childhood by tightly wrapping it. This permanently altered the skull into what we often think of as an alien-like appearance. This extreme tradition of body modification dates back to the Paleolithic era. It spread throughout Asia during the 2nd century BC and thereafter made its way across Europe. The graves represent three distinct groups and span three generations, from 430 AD until the site was abandoned in 470 AD. An isotope analysis of the bones showed that some of the later burials were occupied by people who were from the immediate area and had lived there under Roman rule, while others migrated there after being displaced elsewhere. These groups had noticeably different burial customs, yet all three practiced skull binding, reflecting its spread across cultures. They used different binding techniques, further indicating that it was one of several cultural practices that were exchanged between the groups as they learned to cohabitate with one another. Did you know that skull binding and skull modification was so popular? Let me know in the comments! Number 8. Sacrificed Woman Looking deeply into cultures where rites and rituals included human sacrifice is always disturbing. The rituals and history of the Moche culture include many creepy and disturbing revelations. The mysterious Moche flourished from roughly 100 to 800 AD in what is now Peru. Human sacrifices were a regular occurrence for the Moche people. At a five-story tall site infamously known as the Temple of Doom at the Cao Viejo site, warriors were offered to the gods in a particularly gruesome way. Their throats were slit and their blood was poured into a goblet for a priest, who then drank it down. Murals at the site dating back 1,700 years depict these sacrificial victims, leading experts to believe that only male warriors were sacrificed. But that belief changed in 2013, when archaeologists uncovered the tomb of a woman who appears to have been sacrificed by the Moche. She most likely died either by ingesting a toxic substance or was strangled with a cord, and was just 17 to 19 years old at the time. The woman was buried face down with her head facing west and her arm extended toward the sea. The discovery builds on previous findings that challenged long-held beliefs about the role of women in Moche culture. In 2006, the mummified remains of a female Moche leader were found inside an elaborately painted burial chamber at Cao Viejo. Discoveries like these prove that we still have a lot to learn about the Moche and other pre-Columbian cultures in the Americas. Number 7. 15th Century Witch Prison 23 women and one man were tried and executed for witchcraft in Aberdeen during Scotland's Great Witch Hunt of 1597, roughly 30 years after the country's transition from Catholicism to Protestantism. In 2016, historians identified evidence of this dark chapter of the city's past in the form of a chapel that they believe served as a prison for detained suspected witches. All that remains of the makeshift holding center is a two-inch wide iron ring embedded on a stone pillar of the St. Mary's Chapel of St. Nicholas, which doesn't seem like much. Arthur Winfield, who led a project to restore the chapel for the Open Space Trust, told the Daily Mail that the ring seemed so insignificant he was skeptical that it was anything more than a piece of metal in the wall. But the history that goes along with the ring, and the building itself, is more than slightly disturbing. Aberdeen's archives reveal that the ring was installed specifically for chaining up the accused while they awaited their unfortunate fates. The frigid chapel was the suspect's last stop before they were executed and burned. Detailed records list the supplies that were needed for the gruesome campaign, including tar barrels, rope, stakes, shackles, and peat for burning. This city meticulously recorded the details of each suspect, 
who likely died as a result of baseless superstition rather than valid allegations. St. Mary's Chapel originally served as a refuge for Catholic women to pray, but following the Reformation in 1560, it was converted into two sanctuaries. The church's use changed yet again when King James VI of Scotland ruthlessly embarked on the Great Witch Hunt. St. Mary's went on to house the city's gallows and served as a soup kitchen for some time. Archaeologists found the remains of over 2,000 people at the site, but none of the accused witches, who were likely buried elsewhere on unhallowed ground. Number 6. Ancient Pet Cemeteries Most of us are familiar with the horror writer Stephen King and the infamous story Pet Cemetery, later made famous in the 1989 movie of the same name. The idea of burying dead pets has always provoked some creepy feelings. This, apparently, has long been a human behavior. The modern-day Peruvian capital of Lima sits upon layers of past settlements dating back thousands of years. Here and elsewhere throughout the country, archaeologists have uncovered numerous graveyards containing the remains of both people and dogs, as well as sites dedicated exclusively to canines. These cemeteries date back between 900 and 1350 AD, when the region was inhabited by a pre-Columbian agricultural civilization called the Chiribaya. Often buried with toys and blankets, the dogs were laid to rest in separate plots next to the burials of deceased humans, showing that the culture highly valued man's best friend. The ancient people of Peru used their canine companions for herding llamas, and it appears as though humans and dogs were occasionally sacrificed. One particularly bizarre site, discovered underneath the Lima Zoo by archaeologist Karina Venegas Gutierrez, is filled with human remains bearing signs of torture and violence, showing that they suffered gruesome deaths. The dog skeletons lack these marks, suggesting that they were ritually strangled. As of 2015, scientists were working on trying to prove a genetic connection between the dogs of the past and the modern-day Chiribaya Shepherd but other types of dogs have been found at these cemeteries, including a small bulldog-like breed and dogs that still roam the country's streets today. Would you want to be buried with your dog? Or do you think pet cemeteries are creepy? Let me know in the comments! Number 5. Notre Dame Crypt The April 2019 fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris put the historic building out of commission for an extended period. Even parts of the structure that were not damaged in the blaze had to close, including the archaeological crypt that sits beneath the courtyard, which was covered in toxic lead dust, mold, and debris. Cleaning crews spent over a year restoring the crypt, which finally reopened in September. It was first made accessible to the public in 1980 and is considered one of Paris's hidden gems, according to Smithsonian Magazine. Occupying over 19,000 square feet of space, it is the largest crypt in Europe. Numerous artifacts were discovered in and around the crypt during excavations between 1965 and 1970. Included amongst them are a docking port from before the city became Paris and was still known by its Gallo-Roman name, Lutetia, remnants of Roman public baths, 4th century ramparts, a medieval chapel basement and road, and the remains of a 19th century sewage system. Notre Dame attracts millions of visitors annually, but many people visit the cathedral without ever knowing about the discreet crypt, which is marked by an inconspicuous side entrance that easily goes unnoticed. In fact, Elaine Schiolino pointed out in a Smithsonian Magazine article that not many people showed up on the day of the crypt's reopening. Number 4. Eerie Shipwreck Imagine a ghostly shipwreck that reveals itself from time to time only to disappear back into the sand and waves. The ruins of the SV Karl, a German ship that ran aground off the Cornish coast during World War I, reappeared in late 2019 during low tide following a violent storm. The British Navy was towing the 60-foot, three-masted, steel-hulled sailing vessel to London in 1917 with plans to dismantle it for scrap metal when it became stuck on a reef during a storm and broke away from its tow line. Tugboats made two attempts to refloat the ship after salvage experts noticed that the hull seemed undamaged. But their efforts were in vain, and the SV Carl was ultimately declared a loss and abandoned in place. Shortly thereafter, it became buried in sand. Late last year, the long-buried ship briefly emerged from the sand, giving people an opportunity to catch a glimpse of the ghastly wreck. 
This isn't the first time that the ship has revealed itself to beachgoers. It often appears during winter, when storms wash away the sand covering it, according to Cornwall Live. But the vessel is never exposed for long before the sands wash back over it, reconcealing it. The sand has helped to preserve the SV Carl, which is in surprisingly good shape for its age. It's just one of an estimated 6,000 shipwrecks along the 250-mile Cornish coastline. What do you think of this disappearing and reappearing wreck? Pretty cool? Pretty creepy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more amazing and creepy archaeological content. Number 3. A Crash from the Past The shipwreck of the SV Carl isn't the only relic of the past that has a habit of disappearing, only to reappear later. In September 1942, during World War II, a U.S. fighter plane went down off the coast of northern Wales. The pilot, 24-year-old 2nd Lieutenant Robert F. Elliott, crash-landed the Lockheed P-38 Lightning fighter during a gunnery practice mission. Thankfully, Elliott walked away from the wreck unscathed, but he was tragically reported missing in action several months later. Following the crash, the downed aircraft was buried in 6.6 .6 feet of sand. It reappeared several times over the years when the water washed the sands away, including during the 70s, in 2007, and again in 2014. Late last year, government officials announced that the plane was given protected status, making it the UK's first legally designated military aircraft wreck conserved for its historic and archaeological value. While this and other lingering World War II wrecks that have reappeared in recent years serve as eerie reminders of the dark time in the world's history, these wartime landmarks also have sentimental value to the relatives of soldiers who served in wars. My uncle was among those brave and expert fighter pilots who served with distinction during World War II, Elliot's nephew Robert Elliot said in a statement following news of the plane's protected status. My visit to the site with my wife Kathy in 2016 was very moving and emotional. Number 2. China's Hanging Coffins In southern China, there is a man-made cave containing dozens of hanging coffins suspended as high as 165 feet in the air. Weighing over 220 pounds each, the oversized caskets are all either wedged between rock openings or hanging from wooden stakes. They were put in their places as far back as 1,200 years ago by the ancient Bo people as part of a religious ritual of some type. A handful of the coffins are torn up, which experts believe happened during the 1960s when someone discovered the site, failed to report it to the authorities, and used the wood as firewood. This is just one of several such cemeteries throughout the region, some of which date as far back as 3,000 years and house coffins up to 300 feet in the air. One site in the Gizhou province is littered with an array of ancient artifacts, including clothes, bones, and ceramics. Some researchers speculate that laying the dead to rest in a hard-to-reach place blessed them and prevented animals from feeding on their remains. Others theorize that the elevated sites were seen as a way to get the deceased closer to heaven. How the ancient people transported the caskets to their final resting place is also unknown, considering how difficult they are to get to even now with modern equipment and technology. The Bo civilization itself is shrouded in mystery as well. Experts believe that they were persecuted and mostly disappeared amid the onset of the Ming dynasty in the late 14th century save for a few who likely assimilated into other local minority groups. Number 1. New Forest Arbor Glyphs Recently, it's been more difficult and arguably more dangerous than ever before to travel to various landmarks, monuments, and other historic and archaeological sites around the world. As a result, many organizations are turning to the internet so that people can visit virtually. In October, England's New Forest National Park Authority, or NPA, displayed over 100 examples of historic tree etchings called arbor glyphs on its website. The free digital display features an interactive map leading visitors to different carvings, some of which date back centuries, perhaps even as far back as Shakespeare's time. While the NPA embarked on the project in order to record images that are fading and distorting with time, it also offers a convenient way to stave off quarantine boredom. The tree graffiti consists of initials, names, dates, government markings, and witchcraft symbols. One of the most commonly spotted etchings is of something called the King's Mark, 
which was used for labeling trees as crown property for shipbuilding during the early 19th century. Not all the marked trees were used, however, because steel and iron eventually replaced timber as primary shipbuilding materials, hence why forest visitors can still spot the king's mark today. Trees bearing concentric circles were likely marked by witches, who used the symbol as a way to ward off evil spirits. U.S. service members also carved proof of their presence into the bark during World War II. Although the carvings are a long-standing tradition in the forest, park staff strongly caution visitors against leaving their own mark, as the practice now is against the rules. Thanks for watching! Which of these archaeological finds intrigues you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more! See you later! Bye!